I am so honored to be here tonight as one of hundreds of thousands of anti-Zionist Jews who proudly join the millions of people around the world rising up in solidarity with the people of Gaza and in solidarity with all Palestinians everywhere struggling for freedom. We refuse to stand by silently as Israel in inflicts unimaginable violence against the 2.3 million people of Gaza who have been under blockade since 2007, the majority of whom are already refugees from the Nakba, as Israel murders thousands of Gazan children, elders, journalists, poets, parents, doctors, teachers, entire families, so many still trapped under the rubble, so many starving, so many ill with no medical care to speak of. We grieve every single life, every single life, a whole world. And it is from this grief that we denounce 75 years of Israeli apartheid and occupation that created the conditions for this crisis. We, with our whole beings, we reject Zionism itself as a racist and colonial ideology. We know that our safety, our dignity, and our very souls as Jewish people are to be found in solidarity, not in apartheid. In multiracial coalitions against white supremacy, not in coalitions with white supremacists. in channeling our fear and our rage and our grief into movements for justice, not into military superpowers. We will not be used as a moral cover for the oppression of Palestinian people, not in our names. I flew here directly from Washington, D.C., where I had the great honor to support 18 elder Jewish women, the eldest age 81, as they chained themselves to the White House to demand that President Biden call, stop this genocide and call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire. These women, many of them older than the state of Israel, many of them children of the Holocaust, many of them who have lived through the horrors of McCarthyite repression, screamed, Biden, you cannot hide. We charge you with genocide. They read the names of Palestinians who have been murdered over the past two months of Israeli bombing and siege, this time starting with the eldest. Multiple 93-year-old Nakba survivors as Secret Service cut off their chains with bolt cutters, these powerful Jewish women stood with millions around the world who recognize Palestinian freedom as integral to the freedom of all people. While American media tries to characterize the massive growth of anti-Zionism amongst American Jews as merely a marginal position amongst young people, we know better. It is not a generational rift. It is an intergenerational legacy. We are proud to come from generations of Jews who opposed, opposed each and every form of oppression, including Zionism. Who saw Zionism for what it was, a false solution to the crimes of European anti-Semitism that would be used that would be used to dispossess, and dispossess indigenous Palestinians of their land, who connected their own activism against racism and patriarchy at home to wars and colonialism abroad, and saw a common enemy, white supremacy and empire. 
And we are not at all surprised that it has always been women and queer people and trans people who have protected and expanded and passed on the most radical parts of our tradition. All of our work building a thriving Jewish anti-Zionism is, is just one part of a broader movement for social justice made possible by the courage and the refusal of our movement elders who struggled and still struggle for black liberation, indigenous sovereignty, decolonization, AIDS funding and treatment, prison abolition, reproductive justice, an end to war, and more. Our movement elders have taught us that it is either all of us or none of us. That everyone deserves the chance to be a kid and everyone deserves the chance to grow old. And for that reason, from our hearts and from our souls, we reject Zionism. Because it has been used as the premise for over 75 years of Palestinian dispossession, exile, and death. Because it tries desperately to conflate Judaism with Zionism. When Judaism is our thousands year old rich tradition and Israel is a 75 year old settler colonial apartheid state. Because it's been used to generate wealth for weapons manufacturers, war profiteers, tech companies, and Western military powers. Because it makes freedom chants on college campuses somehow more controversial than an actual genocide that is actually happening before our eyes now. Because it has been used to stoke Islamophobia, to criminalize dissent, to break apart social justice movements with false and cynical accusations of anti-Semitism. Because it has been used to flatten diverse Jewish lives and traditions and histories and pain and turn them into tools of oppression. Because it has been used to harm Mizrahi and Sephardi Jews, separating them from their home countries and cultures, positioning, positioning Palestinian people and Jewish people of Arab descent on the opposite sides of a colonial regime, instead of as neighbors who have lived together for generations. because it is the cornerstone of the Christian right agenda throughout the world. The same anti-Semitic forces that are behind attacks on abortion, on trans kids, on trans care, on black studies, on immigrant rights, on Palestine solidarity, and more. Because it has been used as a tool for British imperialism in Palestine. and as a false solution to centuries of European anti-Semitic violence, of European fascism, that Palestinians have nothing to do with and should not have to pay for. Because if you really care about Jewish safety and about anti-Semitism, you would fight fascism and you would fight white supremacy, and you would fight austerity, and you would fight militarism. You would not fight Palestinians. Because we use the word genocide on purpose. Not only because Israel's acts meet the legal definition of the crime of genocide, but because we know what genocide is and because the lesson we take from the Holocaust is that everyday people let it happen. Yeah. 
because we must let the life or death of Palestinian people be more urgent than our fear of being criticized, being ostracized, or being fired. Because history will judge us by what we do and what we do not do now. As my friend Sumeya Awad says, your silence will haunt you. The Israeli government wants the public to believe that they speak on behalf of all Jews. But here's the truth. In the past two months, we have organized the largest demonstrations of Jewish people in solidarity with Palestinian freedom in history. We have poured into the streets and locked down congressional offices and shut down train stations and blocked bridges and taken over the nation's capital to say no business as usual while the U.S. is arming and funding the genocide of the Palestinian people. The Israeli government hopes that we will grow tired and weary. Many in our own government hope so too. They hope we will give up and give in. But I want to tell you this. We are only growing in numbers. We are only growing in moral clarity. We are growing in urgency and growing in power. The only thing we feel more than heartbroken and horrified and enraged is determined like never before. As thousands are chanting around the world, we are not freeing Palestine. Palestine is freeing us. Because none of us are free until all of us are free from every river to every sea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.